So today, we're going to hit you with uh, skyrocketing must-have best value breakouts. All the... All the key words, but for real, we're going to hit you, talk a little breakout action 2023. This is usually a dynasty show. We get in a little redraft, but I feel like these could kind of stray into both lanes, right? Austin, do you feel that way about your guys as well? Yeah, absolutely, man. I, uh, I, dude, tell you the truth, I enjoy talking about a lot of the younger assets. I think the community does this as well. Oh, sure. They, they absolutely enjoy hearing the rookies or just the second, third year players much, much more than the veterans. Who's first? I, I'm going to go Jerry Judy first. I was trying to, I know Austin has a few in, in there, and I was actually trying to stay away from the second year guys a little bit. Um, you know, obviously, I, I've doubled down on Traylon in a bunch of areas. I've traded for Traylon. I put my money where my mouth is. I think he's going to be a breakout this year. Now, obviously, bummer of some news today. Uh, carted off a little LCL injury, so we'll see how that affects him moving forward. I like Traylon was a favorite of mine, uh, but like I said, I wanted to challenge myself a little bit and not just be in the in the second year uh, guys. Not, I think that's traditionally who you'd be talking about in a in a breakout video like this. Second, but we got a what's this third year for Jerry Judy here, or is this fourth year? All right, so Jerry Judy's coming into his third year, and we haven't seen a thousand yards or seventy receptions in his career yet. He's coming into his fourth year. He has wait, three wait, years of wait, experience. Wait. Wait, Jerry Judy did crack a thousand total yards. Yeah, but but not not over a thousand. <laughs> Settle down. It says nine seventy two. <laughs> Hasn't cracked a thousand yards receiving, receiving. or seventy receptions in his career. Uh, but this this will be the season because you heard it here on the FFD's breakout show. He's breaking out. Um, <laughs> He was wide receiver 22 last year, which, you know, I think maybe a lot of people thought it might have been worse than that. Um, how bad the Broncos were, 13.6 points per game. Um, 14th in, in Yak with 418 yards, tied for fourth. In Yak per reception with 6.4. 12, 12th in yards per route run with 2.18 and an 8 out of, of 12.1. So, you know, pretty good there. Um, and then going kind of in that overall score with with – being wide receiver 22 you remember week two he got that chest injury and we thought he might be out for a while because i think he might even got carted off at that point like he was down for a minute and we were like oh shit jerry judy's season might be over so that was a 2.2 on that game and then the next game he puts up a 3.7 coming back from a chest um and then the rest of until the buy is pretty productive it's 15.3 it's 8.3 8.4 16.6 and 18.3 coming into the bye week so and i think judy did get injured or uh sutton got hurt around that time um sutton was out a little later in the season okay i believe yeah Um, because sutton was pretty hot there at the beginning you thought it was gonna be sutton was gonna like who do you who's the guy you want in denver was like kind of the question sutton sutton missed week 14 and 15 okay um so he was around. He might have been on the injury report, but he was around. So Judy had the chest injury, couple of low scores, and then a nice productive stretch. The, you know, the eights are not what you want to see, but I, I honestly thought checking into this that it might be even a little lower than some of those numbers that I put out, how bad the Broncos were and how bad Russell was there for most of the season. Um, but then, like I said, into the bye, comes into week 10. He gets a zero in week 10. It goes out early with a left ankle injury. Um, and that was the first series or two of the game. So right off the rip, dragging that average down, you know, 13.6 and 22 on the season, you, you've got three three games here where, you know, there was a, a, a decent injury and there was a two, a three and a zero in there. So that's going to that's going to hurt all your averages. And then then we come into week 13 where he comes back healthy from this ankle and he is wide receiver six in that stretch until weeks 13 through 18th pff's 11th best wide receiver grade eighth in targets fifth in yards tied for eighth in tds sixth in yak fifth in yards per route run so just comes back and slays it and then we remember the broncos getting a little better there in that stretch of games as well like we saw at the end of the season that russell finally put a little bit of uh strung some things together they got rid of hackett at some point um in that run so I, I, we know Jerry Judy is a, is a route running savant. Uh, that was always what you liked about him coming out. 
week one of the preseason, you saw the Broncos struggling a little early with that offensive line. Um, you know, they still have Garrett Bowles, who is at this point, I think probably average at best does a lot of holding, uh, but he's OK. But so their left tackle is not super strong. They got Cushenberry, who was a who's a center, who was was their rookie last year. They got Quinn Miners, Ben Powers, Quinn Miners was a third in his third season. Um Ben Powers was a free agent pickup, and McGlinchey's a free agent pickup. So we need that line to gel a little bit. You saw in that preseason game, uh, it, it get a little better. It was it was not looking good at the, that that very first preseason game we just saw with Russell. But it came on, and then you saw a nice Judy strike after a Judy drop, which nobody wants to talk about. But everybody was very concerned with that Quentin Johnston drop and the Jamison Williams drop, and that Jerry Judy and Laporta drop. Those didn't matter. Um, you know, the... <laughs> Judy has had, you know, a history of drops uh, throughout, but I, I I just think that week 13 through 18th, and like I said, Sutton did miss 14 and fi- week 14 and 15, but I think that we're just due for a nice, as long as everything, you know, stays healthy, that's always the caveat here. I think this line can gel together, and it, we just need it to be average, and really, we don't need Russell Wilson to return to let Russ cook Russ. We just need Russ to be back to preparing some decent food. Jesus. That's all we need Get Russell to do. this man a microwave at this point. Right. So Jerry Judy for me is is a huge the breakout years coming over a thousand yards over 70 receptions uh, you know seven eight maybe ten touchdowns uh, and then really to me it's it's kind of buying into a Broncos offense I know Sutton has kind of broken out once or twice before but Sutton's so cheap right now uh, 12.4 he's a guy that I just I can't stop. I can't stop drafting him. Um, I know some people are probably, you know, quit him coming onto this show or leading in. Austin was saying how everybody likes to talk about these younger guys that nobody cares about Sutton anymore. He's had his chance. He's he stinks. And it's like, no, I think there's still, you know, some game left in Sutton. We, we know that, you know, uh, head coach's name, John Payton, you know, has had a certain affinity for for a big outside receiver built much like Cortland Sutton a lot of hype building there I believe he had three grabs in that preseason game that we just saw so I think it's a Broncos offense offensive breakout that we're going to see and I don't I don't think we need Russell to be awesome for both of these players to go over a thousand yards we just need him to be middle of the pack Russell Wilson Um, and then you could even throw a little Mims in there he's pretty cheap and he's probably you know now that Patrick's out of there he can help be part of their vertical stretching uh, and keep people honest. We know Russell's got those moon balls in him. Uh, so it's kind of a, a, a Broncos breakout. Yeah, I mean, you can throw Dulcich in here, Javonta we, Williams. Like. We, we certainly could, but I was mostly pointing out that Sutton and, and yeah. Judy are going to be the mainstays. And, you know, Judy's at 5 point or 5.12 in the uh, FFD ADP round uh, 5. Uh, pick 12. <laughs> 5-12, that's and, right. And Sutton, Wide receiver 22. And Sutton at 12-4. So I, I like both of those prices. I'm in very much in on both. Jerry, Judy, my big breakout, and and I'm not leaving the draft. If I miss Judy or, or what, but I'm not leaving the draft without Sutton either. Uh, so that's that's my number one. What do you think, uh, Austin? I love it, man. I'm so happy that you decided to talk about Jerry, Judy. So it's so funny. We look back a year ago. Remember the whole conversation, Jerry Judy or Cortland Sutton, who's going to be the guy, who's going to be the one. And right. And now one year later, it's like, come on, man, it's not even a question. And no disrespect to Cortland Sutton. He's a good player. He got that big contract. I, but I, I think he's a fine player. He's just not Jerry Judy. And Jerry Judy's going to truly separate himself this year. So last season, and you brought up so many great points, right? I, I love that you touched on his fantasy. I know he never shut up, did he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Yeah, but- I, 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 it was all good content. Um, Jerry Judy being 19th in fantasy points per game. Tell you the truth, I think there is so much room for improvement considering Russ was at an all-time low, right? I think that's just – nobody's going to debate that. Nobody's going to argue that. You know, Russ can absolutely be better. He's the, – I, dude, there's no way he's not better, right? right. There's no way there, – there's no way Russ is not better. And Jerry Judy at Russ's absolute rock bottom was able to set career highs in receiving yards um, – touchdowns and receptions okay so like what does that tell you man right it just it's wheels up we love the ceiling we love the upside he got the draft cap the college production i love jerry judy let's go (laughs) let's go all right let's go to the next guy all right let's keep it moving (laughs) 
Who you got, Austin? Who's your first guy? Who, who you want to uh, who you want to champion right here? Let's talk about Jahan Dotson. I'm going to keep this one relatively let's short. Do it. Let's just talk about this awesome second year wide receiver. You know so, he can't score that many touchdowns, right? You know he's not as good as the, the touchdowns say. I mean, he can't <laughs> do this. He can't do it. Can although, he? although he came into the preseason, another game, another touchdown. What do you know? Uh, anyway, I just wanted you to know that he can't. He can't score this many touchdowns. It's not even possible. Regression has to be coming. Drink. Regression's on the board. Drink. All right. Fair enough. Uh, can somebody do me? Can somebody do me a favor, real quick, while I'm about to rant about Jahan Dotson? Can somebody go look at DraftKings or FanDuel and check out his over/under for touchdowns? I'm, I'm curious what they're at. What, you what got it. That? I can effort that. Let's see where he is in ADP, real quick. So. All right. So here's what the media doesn't want you to know about Jahan <laughs> yes. Dotson. So number one, number one, Jahan Dotson commanded a 32 and a half percent target share at Penn State. Penn State. Have you guys heard of the college? It's new. The anyway. Penn State. Yes. Good thing and Matthew's not here. here. All right. <laughs> that was 95th percentile. So he's Woo. pretty good. At, he's pretty good at football. Um, number two, the 16th overall pick. We all love Traylon Burks. Traylon Burks was 18th, right? Two picks later. It did surprise me that that Jahan Dotson was taking two picks before, but that, that draft capital speaks for itself, man. 16th overall, that is awesome draft cap. Number three, six most fantasy points per target. Okay, to do that in your first season with uh, Sam Howell, uh, Heineke, whoever they had back there, or Wentz, I mean, to do that as a rookie, really, in, really, really efficient, impressive stuff. And number four, Wide receiver 25 or better in 50% of his games. Again, as a rookie, his ADP is wide receiver 37 per sleeper. Again, wide receiver 25 in it or better in 50% of his games. To do that as a rookie, like, he's good, man. He's a good player. And nobody really – look, he's getting more love recently, but he's kind of neglected, and it's because of Terry. Terry, another awesome player. Love Terry. I'm just saying Jahan Dotson's a very good player on top of it. And number five, the final thing I have, tied, the, he's tied with Christian Watson for most receiving touchdowns at seven by a rookie wide receiver. But Jahan Dotson played in two less games. So what does that tell you? Um, There's regression he, coming. Yeah. He, <laughs> so I just, I just dropped. Yeah, right. Dude, so I just dropped rankings. Jahan Dotson in Dynasty, I would prefer him over these 10 wide receivers. This is going to get a little spicy. Ooh. I don't like to come out with a lot of hot takes, but this is truly how I feel. I'd prefer Jahan Dotson in Dynasty over Quinton Johnson, Jordan Addison, Michael Pittman Jr., Debo Samuel, Calvin Ridley, George Pickens, Jameson Williams, Christian Kirk, Marquise Brown, and Zay Flowers. So Jahan Dotson is my Dynasty wide receiver 26. I'm very, very close of moving him ahead of DJ Moore, Traylon Burks, Chris Godwin. I mean, he could be like my dynasty receiver 20, 21, 22 range by the end of the year. That that wouldn't surprise me. He could even jump up to like 17 to 20 in my dynasty wide receiver rankings if he could put together a quality season in 2023, which I fully expect him to do. I'll be surprised if he doesn't. Dotson's a huge buy for me. And, you know, this is the type of prospect. This is the type of player that you want to take a shot on. Uh, so much makes sense for Jahan Dotson's stock to appreciate in value. Yeah, that that TD over under is four and a half. Ooh. Smash the over. It's Smash like week over. one. Under's I'll done. The, the under's right. minus 120. Yeah, I'll then owe you 50 bucks right now. Take the over. <laughs> Let's do I, it. We can't sports bet in South Carolina on <laughs> DraftKings. Actually, you then owe me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll say it was for pizza and beer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they're going to be like, it was only $50. It's 2023. Uh, I, no, like, I mean, I like everything you set up until all those players you said you'd rather have over him. You know, that, that I guess that's putting your money where your mouth is. Yeah. Um, and that's, a, I think, also a prime example of like, hey, just because someone has a player like that in their rankings where they're ranking them doesn't mean that's where you have to pull the trigger on taking that player either. That just means he's he's going to be a big value, right? And our ADP is 710. That's well below pretty much everybody that you listed off by at least a round, if not more. Yeah. Um, and, and and I disagree with that part, but I do love John Dotson. Thought he was a fantastic prospect coming out. Obviously, terrible landing spot. You thought that was going to be the case last year, and all he did was basically score a touchdown every time he hit the field. And 
Right. Not that excited about the Washington what? offense this season, but I mean, Howell showed the ability to move it, and and then he saw the connection, and he's yeah. a beast. The talent is there. You bet on the talent. This is a dynasty. Let's go, Jahan Dotson. I think the only thing keeping him from there is the same conversation that we've we've had with with Terry from being a second or third round pick perennially. He's a quarterback. It's just that we haven't seen the quarterback play. I think he would already be up there. So I think you have every right to put him there. The talent's there to be there. It just if Sam Howe's going to be that guy, or if next year they got to find the, the next guy to do that. But uh, I I think the talent's there, and I I agree with you, man. Nope. Everyone was hating on Dotson last year. Still hadn't. I still don't think everybody. He's one of those it. guys. No matter how good he does, they're gonna find something to nitpick and bitch right. about. Regression, regression, nope. regression. I'm so cool. I know the word regression. Not everybody's a believer, you know. What I want to walk through a few of these with you guys real quick before before we move on. So sure. I just need ten receivers that are very close to him in in dy- consensus dynasty rankings. I just mentioned I prefer Dotson over all of them. So I want to walk through a few of them with you guys. Sure. Would you prefer Jahan Dotson over George Pickens in dynasty? I gotta stick with me, George. I think, yeah, I'll, I'll, I think it's slight, slight lean Pickens. Yeah, for me, Jameson Williams or Jahan Dotson. Jameson, Jameson. But now I don't think we got cleared up what that issue is today. So he was on the cart too. So if that's, Jesus, if that's we an, get rid of these carts. If that's an Achilles or an ACL, then it's for sure Dotson. Yeah, but I guess. Jahan Dotson or Zay Flowers. Who do you guys have higher? Mm, that's an, probably another coin flip for me. I, I'll. I got to go Zay, I mean, just based on the value, okay. you know. I'll t- I think I'll take Zay, too, just because I feel better about that potential top 10 offensive production just out of, out of the offense in general. And last one I'll ask you guys, who would you rather, Calvin Ridley or Jahan Dotson in Jahan. Dynasty? That's easy. Probably okay. Jahan in, in Dynasty, but I think Calvin Ridley's about to tear it up this year. <laughs> Redraft Calvin. So you're taking, him, you're taking Dotson over all those guys? I like it. I mean, I, I don't. I think that would if if he was in if he was in Pittsburgh, I think that would be you know I think or he, L.A. or right or or the if you name if you put him in any of the positions of any of those other guys that you just named, say Flowers, you put him in Baltimore, you put him in Detroit, you put and then it's it's Dotson, it's Dotson all right. day long. Yeah, um, but you know how much do you bet on situation over talent? You know that that's an ever long debate. I think so. Um, talent baby but it, I think they're all pretty close for me and I, I like I like that you're the the, t- the testicular fortitude yeah to stick them up there as my guy yeah. McFoley used to say put them on the table yeah yeah I, I just believe in the player I believe yeah. in the prospect I like what I, I loved what I saw in college I really really liked what I saw in his rookie season yeah um, there's again so much makes sense and I'm willing to put my money where my mouth is one year from today I'm telling you he's going to be an appreciating asset I don't necessarily know how much he's going to rise, but I promise you he will rise in value a year from today. Yeah, I think you just saw exactly what you saw in college translate immediately over to the NFL. Right. And now right. week one of the Hands, preseason, he gave you a, a quick reminder. So I, speed. I I agree and I love it. So let, let's keep it moving here. High pointing ability. You got anything right? else before we get out of here on Dotson? Uh, final thing. What if Sam Howell actually hits? If, if, Sam, Howell, if Sam Howell fucks, we are... <laughs> We dots it's dots and wheels up and you you probably made the right call. For sure. For sure. But it's dynasty. It's a long game. So, you know, you I think that's a that's I don't know if there's it's okay a, making uh, that call. A rule of statute of limitations <laughs> of when they have to break out yeah. to be in, in the video as a hit, you know, the hit rate of breakouts. I think it can I think he's moving up this year. I think sure. he's you know deluxe apartment in the sky. Ooh, I don't know if people know. will care though, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't so. matter. It's all about being right. Yeah. <laughs> well, people don't care about that either. They no. wouldn't ha- watch half the shows they no. fucking watch. No. Good, good, uh, good Jahan Dotson. Glad you brought him up uh, so I didn't have to. But I'm, we're going to keep it moving. My next one, I'm going Elijah Moore. FFD ADP 11-4, wide receiver 45 right now. Um, and, you know, we, we saw a mini breakout for a second from uh, Elijah Moore. He was in weeks... Uh, in his first season, week seven through thirteen, he was wide receiver three in the twenty one season before a quad injury uh, cut that short. So that was a little bit of a bummer. And then twenty two, I think all around is is a disappointment. Thirty seven receptions and a touchdown. Um, 
was it maybe the role he was asked to play for for a chunk of the season there uh from from some of the stuff i was kind of looking up it was it was longer developing routes deeper routes which he is capable of winning but with zach wilson back there in the beginning of the season him not either having enough time to get the ball to him or having the wherewithal to to read that and and that be where he goes uh, I think was a bit of the combo, the combo platter there. According to uh, Next Gen Stats, uh, Moore's average route depth for that season was 14.2 yards downfield. That ranked 10th out of 100 qualifying receivers. Um, and that was according to uh, Michael Nania of a, of, a, of a Jets website who's, who's heavy in the analytics. And Garrett Wilson, for context, was 60th out of 100 in Next Gen um, average route depth. So contrast in kind of how they were being played and when you're under duress and a younger guy where's that ball going to go probably to the shorter easier quicker read uh than than having faith of going down so i think that was part of what the blow-up problem was you fast forward and there's a verbal altercation a profane uh laced altercation between moore and lafleur uh which is the oc of the jets formally now now with the uh the the rams uh, and Moore gets sent home, requests a trade, resulting in more than missing a few games after that. Somehow they still got a second out of him. Uh, and you can kind of guess how the rest of the season went for Elijah Moore. And, and now he's in Cleveland. Um, and really, you know, there's not a whole lot of great stats to read off besides how great he was in that stretch of time in 21 from seven week 7 to 13. And I think you saw what the ability can be and what, what he can do for you. And then, you know, all the off-season fluff and, and love for more about how they were going to use him is probably how he should properly be used. And then week one of the preseason, yeah. you come out and you see that exactly come out to fruition. You see it be go right down the field. He's he's in the backfield. He's out of the backfield. He's on shorter, quicker things. I think he can win deep without a problem, but it doesn't need to be his primary thing. And I think it seems like him and Deshaun Watson are going to be on the same page. You have Amari Cooper out there uh, to kind of... You know, you can't put your best guys over on Elijah Moore. They got to be on Amari Cooper and maybe even doubled up on Amari Cooper. And you move Elijah Moore around to get him singled up and freed and be in the slot and be out of the backfield and be able to do the things that he's really good at. Get the ball in his hands uh, and then let him work. Uh, and I think that's what we're going to see. I think the 11.4, 11th round uh, ADP right now is is really, really, really solid, really enticing. I'm not I'm not leaving my draft without him. I'm not going to stop until I get enough. Um, and I, I keep I keep grabbing this guy. He, he I'm fine with a second for Elijah Moore and just about any, you know, dynasty format. Um, I, I believe in him that much. I think Especially if you can make it a late second or get like sure. a three back or something. Um, you might not even have to give that up. You but. might not have to, but I'm, I'm fine with just going straight up to um, I, I like him as much as any of those wide receivers going in that second round. Um, and just about all the running backs going in the second round. Maybe if it was tight end premium, I'm out one of the, one of those because I do like the tight ends as opposed to a lot of people. But man, uh, Elijah Moore from and redraft wise, I believe we're doing a redraft uh, draft right now. I believe I just got him in the tenth or eleventh round there. So uh, pertaining to redraft, Elijah Moore was is a is a must draft uh, breakout for me as well. So any thoughts on on Elijah Moore there, uh, Austin? So I was surprised to see that Jonathan Mango was ranked above Elijah Moore. That that really surprised me. Uh, regardless if it's Dynasty or Redraft, I, I would absolutely rather Elijah Moore. Uh, so a few things I want to point out. He's playing with the best quarterback he's ever had in Deshaun Watson now, right? We love to see that. Back in 2020, Deshaun Watson's final season where, where he played a full season. He led the NFL in passing yards, right? Mm-hmm. He had almost 5,000 passing yards, just over 4,800. Again, like just think about the possibilities, him being the dominant number two wide receiver there, or at least that's what we envision. That's what we believe is going to be the actual results of the case. Um, I think, you know, it should be Amari Cooper, who just had a fantastic yes. season, probably a career year, probably his all around best full season he, in his in his career. Amari Cooper hats off. He was he was one of the best values in, in for all sure. Of- Always, yeah. usually, perennially yeah. slept and hate on, and, and he was great last yeah. year. Yeah. So, uh, Elijah Moore, you know, one thing uh, y- y- y'all know, I'm a big measurable guy, right? Him being five nine, one seventy eight, is is not the best, but it's it's okay, right? We can make it work. We're not talking like, uh, you know, he's not like Maurice Marquise Jones Brown or, 
or uh, even Marquise Brown. Like or Devonta slow, Smith, but, or but the uh, kid just from, naming good small guys off. <laughs> the kid from Dallas, um, Deuce oh Vaughn. God, Deuce Vaughn. Yes, thank you. I'm sorry, I, I couldn't think of his name. You know, it, we're not talking like those types of measurables, but Cole Beasley. Fun, <laughs> yeah, right. I got a fun fact for you guys about Elijah Moore. So his. 34.4% of his total career yards have come after he's had the ball in his hands. Yeah. So that's just proof that, you know, he is a playmaker and we need Stefanski to scheme certain ways to just get the ball in his hands because he is so electric. Right. He is so good. He's just, he's just, he has great vision, man. I think that's one of the most underrated things about Elijah Moore is his vision. Once the ball gets in his hand, he's tough to take down, man. Yeah. Yes. I, go ahead. I got I almost want to go in on Elijah Moore. So oh, know. I just I agree with the Stefanski take, but and then we kind of saw it that. all off season, and we kind of saw a little bit of it, and Deshaun moving around uh, very well, uh, being being decisive, and then when when it's not there, moving around, being able to scramble and get rid of the ball a little bit, all all positive things for Elijah, um, as well as I think Stefanski is a little bit on the hot seat because you do have a very solid team here. And I think he has to break out of it. We've talked about this a decent amount on this show in the offseason. I think he needs to break out of kind of what his concept is and get together with Deshaun, which they have talked about and said they have done, and run a, a combo platter of the offense between what Deshaun likes to do and what Stefanski wants to do. Um, and I think them trading for, for uh, more and then, like you said, scheming him into, into space and positions that he can win the one-on-one -on -one battle and then get rolling – even if it's just as simple as, hey, we're out of, we saw, you saw him get a carry in, in that, you know, right. I don't need him to a get a million carries. I didn't know where he came from. Just keep you it, honest. All, all of a sudden he bit. added in space. Right. Ball in hand. Let's go. Um, and, and, you know, we're, we're big fans of Deshaun on the field play. Not, not, uh, you know, anything else, you know, take that for what it is. We're talking fantasy football. We allegedly don't like him right off the field. So uh, anyway. Yeah, I think Elijah Moore is a fantastic person to put on this list because, you know, coming out 34th overall pick, so the draft capital, I think, trumps the size. And <laughs> Maybe, unless it's 2-2 out well. Then you've got, well, sure. Unless you don't like the guy, then it doesn't fit my narrative. But electricity, right, from this guy, 4-4, speed. And you saw him flash for a period of, I, I don't know, four to six games. You saw what it could be with just even Zach Wilson. And then for him to get in the doghouse and still demand a second-round pick in a trade to the Browns, which is good for him from that standpoint because it wasn't in season. It was off season. He's had the whole time there. They need to make that worth their while. Right. So they are getting in him, him involved. You saw that. Jim Rome was absolutely crushing the Browns and Deshaun Watson today because <laughs> of a practice where I guess Deshaun threw three picks today and he was like he you know he was just crushing them. I'm like I'm like did you not watch the game the actual game the preseason game where it was like they spread them out and they just meticulously meticulously went down the field and they got to the goal line and I think they got stuffed on like three straight runs and they didn't have Chubb and they didn't want to run Deshaun at that goal line at that point, although they did call a design run for him and you did see him take off. I was very excited about what the Browns obviously can be and you see more all over the place making plays on just one drive. And so you've got the pedigree, you got the guy you like, you've seen it happen before. His value's down. I mean, shit, it's 9-3 here in redraft. A little redraft ADP for your pleasure. And then where did you say he was? 11 4 in, in, in Dynasty? That's just fantastic value. Like, that's going up, man. I'm excited about the Browns offense and, and watching what that can be. Deshaun looked like he was in the right mindset of being able to take off and keep drives alive. And then you throw in Chubb, and it's just going to be really hard to guard all these people. And it should be wheels up. I think it's a fantastic yeah. breakout candidate. All right, who else you got, uh, Austin? Uh, who you feeling uh, down in? Uh, I can feel it down in your plums. Down in my plums. Let's talk about some running backs. I want to talk about Khalil Herbert. All right. So if if you neglect the running back position early, it's okay, man. There's a few guys that I really like like later in the draft this year, and I'm going to talk about both of them. First guy is Khalil Herbert. Right now, his running back, his ADP is running back 35. Right. This is per Fantasy Pros. Khalil Herbert had a 5.7 yard per carry, which ranked first in the NFL, right? That in itself just speaks volume, man. He is a good, efficient runner. And this is a minimum of 100 plus attempts in 2022, okay? So it wasn't that small of a sample size. Um, his college yards per carry, 7.6. Khalil Herbert ranked 96th percentile. And that was his fifth year when he was a, a super senior at Virginia Tech. First four years, let's not talk about him because they don't fit my narrative. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, love um, it. Yeah, but Khalil Herbert's been extremely efficient in the NFL. He's been a very efficient runner in the NFL. His size is fine too, man. Five foot nine is okay for for running back. Two hundred twelve pounds. I love to see that. Sixth round draft cap, far from ideal, right? But once you make it to the big leagues, man. Like once you can play, it doesn't matter, right? right. Yeah, it's like transferring in college. They don't care about your high school uh, GPA. <laughs> yeah. And and I care about I care about draft cap more than you guys do. I I fully recognize that. But again, like there no cap. are out, there there <laughs> there are outliers. Like once you that make was a it, double man, entendre. Huh? Sorry. Like look at look at uh, Isaiah Pacheco. Look at Brock Purdy. I mean, these guys were barely drafted. Chris Carson. You know what I mean? These are just yeah. some mm, bigger Chris Carson, players. big favorite of ours. We nailed it. Knocked it out of the fucking park with Chris Carson. I, I love Chris Carson. He was a good player, man. Uh, let's let's get back to Khalil. Yeah. So David Montgomery signed with Detroit. Right. He had four straight seasons as an RB two or better, top twenty four running back. And I want to talk about David Montgomery real quick. His career season average, 229 rushing attempts, which would have been 11th this year. 39 receptions, which would have been 17th this year. 268 total touches, which would have ranked for 14th. 3.9 yards per carry. Okay. Khalil Herbert's career yard per carry in the NFL is 5.0. Chicago's offensive line ranked 31st to start last year, and it's climbed 10 slots to 21st this offseason. So that's a very large step in the right direction. You yeah. love to see it. You love to see it, fellas. For sure. Uh, and and yes, there's plenty of room for volume and upside in Chicago's offense. 235 vacated touches after David Montgomery's departure. Justin Fields. Let's talk about Justin Fields. Mm. Uh, him and David Montgomery and Khalil Herbert combined for over 2,500 rushing yards last year. That is a massive number. Uh, that that I, it's just making my my case even stronger for Khalil, for Khalil Herbert being a significant value in 2023 based off of his already, uh, his ADP at running back 35. And then real quick, like his competition, Roshan Johnson, which I believe is, you know, I've gotten kind of lower on him the more I've dug into him and Dante Foreman. So Roshan, he's got good size, right? Standing six foot, 220 pounds, uh, but he had a, a very, very poor collegiate production. He never had 650 rushing yards he never had 7% target share. And and this is over four years at Texas. And, you know, of course, it was due to B. John Robinson's presence. Who? Uh, he's a player that's supposed to be pretty good. Oh, decent. Uh, I, I think I, I heard just, that name. I got a little spicy, actually. I had the third overall pick in, in my redraft draft two days ago. I took Bijan over CMC. I went Let's for go. It. Fuck I it. just went for it, man. I just wanted to have fun. You guys are always talking about... <laughs> it depends on how much the league's for. <laughs> you guys are always talking about... I like about the win, too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's really not a... It's, there's a decent case for him. I mean, why yeah. not? Fuck yeah, it. I just went, I went for it, man. I usually play very safe and boring, but I was like, yeah, let's have fun, man. I, ne- yeah. I never I never have fun. Is CMC not fun? He's uh, 26. It doesn't matter. Redraft, that's a lot of fun. He's fun, but Bijan's, you know, Bijan's, Bijan's fun, new and sexy. We yeah. covered that multiple times here. Pay attention. <laughs> so, R- Roshan, again, behind Bijan Robinson, didn't do much at Texas. Um, he was a mid fourth round pick, and that's like historically, that's a tough scene for running backs in terms of hit rate. So, there's only three of the active 32 starting running backs that were drafted in round four. It's not a death sentence, of course, but I'm just saying it's not ideal. And with all due respect to Dante Foreman, he's a player that I firmly believe he's actually a really quality runner. We've just simply never seen the solid production from from Dante Foreman for more than a handful of games, right? Like Foreman's heading into year six. He's 27 years old. Uh, he's never hit a thousand total yards. Ten. He's never even hit ten receptions in, in a single season. So I, I just prefer to put my money elsewhere personally. And Chicago is the last thing I want to say. Chicago is firmly molded around power running and play action passes down the field for 2023. I feel strongly about this by Khalil Herbert. He's again, an appreciating asset. Yeah. I, I, um, it was a little bit of a bummer to bring the third running back into, into there for, Who, for Penny the, or they already had Penny. You mean no, Roshan for Roshan? Yeah. Um, you know, but I, I've talked about this a couple of times, you know, Roshan not being a, a running back for his whole career. He was, was a quarterback when he got to Texas, had to had to acclimate to being a That's running right. back. Yeah. Um, so 
you know, it, it could be, a, you know, I think I think the talent is there for Roshan, uh, but I think Khalil Herbert could have a nice clear path here for for year one to, to pretty much dominate that backfield. I, I think Foreman's a good player. Um, I've been kind of of the school of that, that there's, you know, I'll take the cheapest bear left, but I, I, I think Herbert showed that he can play in the league. Um, like you said, it's cheap. I think he could be ascending if the Foreman deals only one year. We'll see how Roshan goes. It was he was pretty impressive in in parts of his preseason and it's preseason. Uh, but no, I, I don't. I can't. I can't hate on hate on the Herbert here too too much. I, I like I like the case that you laid out there. I actually have. Uh, I'm pulling up my rankings right now. I have Khalil Herbert as my RB24, so he will barely finish as a, as a very very late RB2. It might be a little bit of a hot take. That's how I feel. I believe in the player. Um, and and I, I think Chicago is going to be fun this year, man, regardless yeah. of, of them. Even if they go like 7-10, and 10, whatever, whatever the record may be, that would be a huge step forward from last year. They're a team that I want to watch. Like, I'm going to sit yeah. down. Ho- hopefully, they're on some Sunday, Monday night prime games. I want to watch Justin Fields. I want to see Khalil Herbert. I want to see DJ Moore. I just want to watch Chicago, man. They're going to be fun. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I like that. And were you, Screen shaking, passes, were you baby. shaking your head at Dante Foreman not being a good running back? Is that what you were doing over there? Yeah. That's a 2,000-yard running back in college. What are you talking about? That is, if he wouldn't have gotten hurt, he was on a trajectory to be awesome. When did, did he get hurt? Second year, third year in the league? What happened in those first two? Yeah. Or maybe he, maybe it was the first year in this league. Special. He could have been. That was an Achilles, right? Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, so I, told anyway. you, I told you it wasn't good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, I can't wait for that to be like, oh, if 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 Jamison Williams is actually hurt, like oh, I told you to get out of him, I told you to sell, he's a bust. I'm like, if if, if you're going with that, he's got hurt and he's a bust. I can't fuck with you. Uh, but all right, so Khalil Herbert, uh, my last one on the breakout list here. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna throw. I had a bunch of guys. I had Cam Akers. I had some some uh, to get a running back in there. I had uh, a bunch of second year guys. Like I let off with Burks, Pickens. I like the Dotson call. I think that was. That was really, uh, really solid there. Uh, but I'm, I'm going Rashad Bateman here. Um, we haven't quite seen it. He's got the good college production that that, that you like to see. Um, he's got decent draft capital, pretty decent there. Still still hanging around. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure his college target share and dominator were all really, really high. Um, but, you know, he missed his first five games in 21 and then only played six games in 22 with foot surgery. So, you know. I don't have a bunch of sexy, fun stats here to tell you what's going on with with Rashad Bateman and how good he's been. He's had some games where it's like, damn, that's the Rashad Bateman we thought that we were going to get here, and we just haven't. He hasn't been healthy, hasn't been able to stay on the field. Plus, we're getting a you know a metamorphosis. Uh, hopefully, uh, Lamar Jackson is going to turn into that beautiful butterfly right here, and and you know go back to that college Lamar spread spread him out. And, you know, I think we're going to go from seeing a, you know, 12 personnel. I know we're going to go from seeing a 12 personnel stale Roman offense that was at one point, you know, really what Lamar needed. And now I think this is exactly what Lamar needs. Take the next step. uh, You know, let my man cook. Let Lamar. Where's those hashtags? Let Lamar cook. Um, You know, Todd Munkin in the first preseason game as OC 89. 82.9% 82.9% of their dropbacks were three wide receiver sets. Uh, during the last preseason game with Greg Roman as OC, 61% of their dropbacks only featured three wide receiver sets. So all right in the preseason, we're already seeing dramatically a big step up here. Um, you have a great cast of characters. Uh, you have Zay Flowers, who is a rookie, who I think is going to be an absolute stud. So I'm buying all the way in. And on the other side, you know, you have Odell, who's 30, 31, coming off, you know, a year removed from an ACL. We don't exactly know what we're getting there. He could be awesome. He could be just fine. He could stink. Uh, but, you know, the three wide receivers that could be on the field, that should be on the field, that are your starting wide receivers are Flowers, Bateman, um, and uh, Odell. And as much as I like Flowers, and I think he's he's the going to be the guy who's their wide receiver one, uh, for a long time coming, I think Bateman, you know, you can make an argument that isn't foolish that as long as Bateman could stay healthy, he could be their their wide receiver one. Uh, maybe even just at least for this season while, you know, him and Zay might go back and forth. Uh, but I think he just needs to stay on the field. I believe FFD ADP has him at nine nine seven. Um, so still good value on him. Seems like nobody cares about him anymore. You could go fishing for him in your league. 
Um, you could probably throw out that net of a of a two and see if you could get Bateman. It's a little risky because of the injury, but man, that that could smash super super hard. Um, and you know, I I think people would come around, come back on that Bateman train super fast and be super pumped about it. Uh, you know, yeah. it, was, it seemed like maybe it was building steam again. Then he got the quarter zone shot in the foot and it seemed to scare everybody off a little bit. Uh, and then they draft Zay Flowers or maybe that was after they drafted Zay. But um, big, I think big, big opportunity coming for, you know, two or three pass catchers uh, in the Ravens offense. And, you know, why not? Why not grab Bateman uh, and throw him on the roster and nine, see, if, see if you can catch a big breakout here? Nine seven is pretty good ADP there for the Dynasty Superflex ADP. 10-8 in redrafts, so even more of a, of a discount there. Yeah, and like uh, I said, I think all these guys that we've talked about are great redraft and dynasty to break yeah. out. So and, and people definitely want to get behind Rashad Bateman. Like you said, coming out of college, he was breakout age in the 93rd percentile, college target chair in the 98th percentile, and the college dominator in, the, in a respectable 83rd percentile. So, you know, and the size and the draft capital, he checked all well, the boxes. The, the size was a little bit of what our, when he when he weighed well, he in and supposed checked to be in, he was supposed bigger, to be a lot bigger than he was. And, uh, low key 190 yeah. weighing in at the combine. A but, lot of cap there. Yeah. Yeah, still twenty um, seventh overall, slipped into that first round. It'd be easy for people to get back on him with anything, and you right. saw like You've only four four eight speed, but you saw him house a seventy five yard slant. I feel like, and it was, or I don't know if it was in. It was like, oh shit, he outran like a. a You've people seen flashes. On the NFL field, so You've seen. Yeah, what, what do you think, uh, Austin? You know, I love Rashad Bateman. I'm so happy that you, you guys picked a good list today. I'm so Woo! happy to talk about him. Um, I have Rashad Bateman as my wide receiver 40 in, in my redraft rankings. So I feel like that's one of my – Yeah, I, I'm just so high on him, right? I have – listen to the players I have right around him. I actually have D-Hop super low at 30 – receiver 39. I have Rashad Bateman at 40 and Juju at 41, Quentin Johnston at 42, just to give you an idea of, of the range that I have him in. And and so I just had a rookie draft, or I just had a redraft league. I had my draft two, three days ago. I had my final pick, 13th round, before kicker and defense. I swear to God, Rashad Bateman was still there, and my jaw dropped. I, I, was, <laughs> I mean, it you know, it frustrated me. It, like, it made me angry. I was just... I don't, I don't even know whose fault it is, if it's just, like, consensus or, like, the ESPN app. Because I had to scroll, like, two or three times just to see who, like, player, like, 150, 160, 170, 180 range. And I saw Bateman. And I'm like, there's no way he's still here. Yeah. And uh, I just – I was ecstatic to get him as, like, my wide receiver seven in that league. Um, I, I, I – again, like, draft cap was awesome. College production was awesome. The si size – like – he checks every box, man. The only issue he really has had is just his health. And I understand right. you can say that's the most important thing. And, and it probably is. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm How just, much control I'm, do you even have of that, you know? Right. I mean, you, you never know, man. You, you just never know. But I, I believe this is the year where you take advantage. You buy in on him. And what's the worst that can happen? The worst thing that's going to happen, you pay like an early third or super late second. And you, and you can app. You said a second is, is what you might have to pay to get him. You're 100 percent right, but I think you might be able to get them even cheaper, right? If someone's offering a 2024 20, second for Bateman, oh my God! I think almost every GM in all of my leagues are are going to take that second and run with it, and I'm going to probably get just roasted in the group chat for, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Like everybody is out on Rashad Bateman except me, and apparently you guys. So I'm happy to yeah. hear that. I'm really happy to hear that. I and I'll tell you what, man. I actually think he's going to be ahead of Zay this year. I do. I, I really, really do. It's just to sh show you how much I really like Rashad Bateman. I believe that Zay is a two, and um, I have, of course, OBJ third. And, and you know, Mark Andrews. I'm just, you know, we're just strictly talking receivers right, right. now. Right, right, He's gonna Agreed. have, he's gonna have his. And we've seen Lamar Jackson lead the NFL in passing touchdowns. He had 36. Okay, like for reference, I think Joe Burrow just had 34, Four? 35, 34. 36, 34, I think. Two. Yeah. Well, yeah, uh, just for reference, like Lamar can throw, man. He's uh, uh, like, yeah. again huge fan. Love Lamar, love Lamar. So I think he can absolutely support Rashad Bateman and Zay and uh, you know Andrews without question. He's going to get his. Yeah, I agree. But we can. Uh, Don't let the liberal media. <laughs> we can't, tell you we can't let the liberal media tell us how to think it. and feel on Bateman. So I think Clayton Bigsby said it best. Uh, who's your last guy here, and we'll get out of here. 
Yeah, absolutely. Final guy I want to talk about today, another running back, Brian Robinson Jr. Another commander. Yep. Brian Robinson. Dude, when I was going through my list, I was like, I really ended up with two commanders. HTTC. Uh, but Brian Robinson Jr., ADP of running back 34. B-Rob played 12 games last year, miraculously. He returned from a tragic off-the-field incident. His 17-game pace. Shot in gang. leg, yeah. <laughs> gang, gang. What's... When he came out to many men, I'm telling you, man, I put the book on Robinson. Dijon That's Robinson. why he's on this list. The many men drop. Yep, yep 100%. <laughs> that video was electric. Move over Brees Hall. Move over Jonathan Taylor. Yeah. Bijan. It's Brian Robinson Jr. He's the dynasty running back one. No. But in all seriousness. <laughs> he will murder you five yards at a time for sure. That's what he did in college. Yeah, <laughs> through the air or the ground. Yeah. So his, his 17 game pace. Very solid, right? 1,129 rushing yards, which would have ranked eighth. That's 10 less for Christian McCaffrey. When I when I was doing the math, I was like, there's no way that's that's right. But the math was math. And anyway, 1,215 rushing Numbers yards. Numbers don't lie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 1,215 rushing. Uh, I'm sorry. 1,215 like total yards, which would have ranked 16th. That was his 17 game pace, okay? This so is prorated if he didn't miss games to a, a gunshot wound. Cor- correct. And Ken Walker, side note, Ken Walker finished with exactly 1,215 total yards, yet Ken Walker's ADP is running back 18. Okay, so Don't that, bring Ken that, Walker into this, all right? You leave Kenny three sticks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I plenty like of people that. want to leave him off the breakout list, that's for sure, but shit. Oh, man. He already, uh, he's a, already been broken out. Yeah. I'm a Ken Walker truther, but uh, 290 rushing attempts, which would have ranked fifth. That's five less than Saquon. And let's talk about Brian Robinson's final seven games. So this is a fairly large sample size. This is close to half the year. Once he got settled in, he was fully healthy. The final seven games. So, again, fairly large sample size. Um, he averaged 20.4 touches, which would have which would have been 347 touches in 17 games. That would have been that would have ranked fourth. I understand he's not going to have 347 touches next season. I get it. I'm just laying out some of the numbers. Uh, Brian Robinson Jr. is built for a large workload. He's six foot two, 224 pounds. You guys know I love measurables. Mm-hmm. Day two draft cap. <laughs> I care about draft cap. You are a sizes through and yep. through. Yep. Third round, which is decent. That's fine. Um, and his final year at Alabama in 2021, B-Rob had over 1,600 yards, 16 touchdowns, 35 receptions, which is low key a lot. He did that in 14 games. Okay. So he had great numbers. This was against the best collegiate defenses, right, in all of college football. Um, and lastly, for what it's worth, J.D. McKissick, he's, he was released back in March. See ya. We're happy about that. You Good love to see you. riddance. Uh, hate, you to see to you. See you. hate to see the injury, but love to see you go. <laughs> yeah. You love to see you for fantasy purposes, yeah. but why love not to see take you a walk. shot? Why not take a shot at Brian Robinson Jr. in the 10th round? Like, personally, I'm cool with reaching on him in the 8th or 9th. Are you talking redraft or dynasty right there? In redraft. Right, so your your team, Brian Robinson over Antonio Gibson. I am. You know, I was I was actually Gibson for years and most of this offseason. And then when I really dug into the numbers and did a lot of research, I've I've it is still really close. It's still very close. Yeah, I I, I, I don't have a problem either way. Yep, yeah, and that's that's exactly how I feel. I hey, check in, in a I week. I like both man. though. Check yeah. in, in a week. I might be back on Gibson, but yeah. um, I have B Rob a hair above him now. Your Gibson's gonna get freed next year, so I, you know I don't I don't I don't hate that. But and, and I like Gibson, man. He's a good yeah. player. I, I think I think Washington Loki has a lot of. Dude, good they have talent. such an awesome offense. It just they we, do. Can, can we get somebody that can run it? Then Dude, then you're in we, trouble. If if Logan Sam Thomas can stay healthy. Yeah. Samuel can distribute. Defense is pretty good. Defensive line could be sick. Yeah. I mean, if Sam Howell hits, man, Washington is going to be they're they're going to be fun to watch. Yeah, I mean, I think I think they're going to be pretty fun to watch. Maybe you know, even if they're even if Sam's uniforms just still okay. make it not that fun to watch. Oh, I like the unis. I love those unis. I kind of dig them. I yeah. kind of like them. Yeah, it's the I ugly agree. color. All right. Well, you know, Brian Robinson says you know, try that in a small town. See what happens. Yeah. <laughs> did we get them all? Do we, do we cover we all it. the breakouts? I mean, if you're not if you're not sold by now, these guys are all breaking out. If you don't have these, just let your other idiot dr- late league mates <laughs> yeah. draft these guys. Any um, any throw-ins? Anybody want to add one in? Uh, I mean, we can have how much time you got? Yeah. How much time you got, buddy? <laughs> Where are we at? We're at fifty minutes. Let's get the hell out of here. No more throw-ins. All right. Unless you have one, Austin. 
No, man. I'm uh, go by Marvin Mims Jr. Go by Jaden Reed. That's it. That's Broncos offense, baby. <laughs> Let's go. Um, so yeah. All right. Well, we appreciate you guys. Uh, Austin, where can we find everything? At Austin Abbott FF on everywhere. I appreciate y'all having me on. It's been great, man. I love talking football. I just love hanging out. It's, it's just great to talk with you guys. Yeah, you've been been fantastic. James Cook, I'll throw him on there. Another year, year two guy. So, Boo. Boo? Doesn't like it. Yeah. Doesn't like first disagreement on the way out. <laughs> it, was, it was going well. Here. Yeah. And you totally blew it. Yeah. All right. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below, all that jazz. Tell us what you like, what you didn't like, who's breaking out. Who's which your guys... breakout? Hit us in the comments yeah. below. Yeah. Yeah. If you listen on the podcast, the least you could do is hit us with a five-star review. We're in, in season, we're going to bring back five-star reviews for a t-shirt contest. All right. Uh, I'm Let's do it. Getting on maybe a couple new new t-shirt ideas. Big D uh, maybe was talking about a hat, potentially. Seeing what's up with that. So maybe getting back into the apparel game a little bit. Let's go. Merch game up. Merch game on up. On fleet. On, on no cap. <laughs> um, all right. We'll catch you guys next time. We appreciate y'all. $5 holler on Discord. Peace.